Jesus, when he gave his life up for the church, it wasn't about programs. It wasn't about a building. It wasn't about production. It, it, it was about the people. He laid down his life for you and for me because we make up the church. He didn't give up his life for nothing. He gave it up for you and gave it up for me. And as a church, we need to be about the people. We need to be about the people. And we wanted to give you an update to this morning about the future of our church. You know, as many of us know, you know, our, our lease for our space is coming up at the end of this year. And this is something that we as a board and me and Pastor Beth, we've been praying about and talking about and, and thinking about and asking for advice about and calling pastors and asking and seeking God, what do you have for us as a church? What do you have for us? You know, God, is it, is it time for us to, 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 to go somewhere else? Is it time for us to stay? These are the questions and the ideas we've been reflecting and pondering on. God, what do you have for us? A local church in West Edmonton, what do you have for us? As we met as a, a board this past week on Monday night, we in my office and, and we talked. We thought, and, and I know our board was praying as we were praying. And after much prayer and conversation, we've decided to not renew our lease in this current facility. And this is not a decision we took lightly. It's not a decision we, we just thought, look, this would be fun, you know. We prayed about this and thought about it and talked about it. You know, this location and this building has served our church for almost 30 years. And I know I've only been here for a short part of that. Some of us in this room have been a part of this story for almost the whole time. And I want to tell you, God has done some miraculous things in this building. He's done some incredible things. In fact, it's almost, we've had over 1,500 Sunday services in this building. It's remarkable. And as we were talking as a board, they were saying, you know, there was times where we were doing three services on a Sunday, you know, two in the morning, one at night. We're talking 5,000 maybe moments of worship in this facility. And this is the location that some of us actually met Jesus for the first time. This is a place where, where some of us, we gave our lives to Jesus. This is, some, for some of us, this is the place where, where God showed up in our life and met us where we were and restored our marriages. But I also want to tell you, it's never been about the building. It's never been about the building. Now, there's many factors that went into our decision and our prayers. We sought, God, what do you have? And I wanted to share what God spoke to me. And it comes from Exodus chapter 21, uh, 13, verse 21. And if you remember, this, this comes when, when, Jesus, or when God or the Israelites are wandering around the desert trying to find the promised land, right? It took them a lot longer than it should have. But God provided for them. And this is what it says. In verse 21, it says, The Lord went ahead of them. He guided them during the day and with a pillar of cloud. And he provided light at night with a pillar of fire. This allowed them to travel by day or by night. Short scripture. But see, the provision of this cloud was important and this fire was important because it offered them shade and protection from the sun as well. It would guide them. They're in the middle of the wilderness. The desert is hot, you know, and so this cloud would protect them. And as they, tra as they travel, they would, you know, keep them cool and, and shaded. That's how I view it, right? Cloud, it's like, yeah, I can find some, some shade, you know. And the pillar of fire, it, it allowed them to travel when it was dark or when it was light. See, they could have chosen not to follow the cloud when it was going. They could have chosen not to follow the fire. Like, that. Uh, my legs are a little bit tired today, you know. They could have chosen not to, but what they do, they had to. They had to follow where God was going. And this is what I feel for our church is that God is saying it's the cloud's moving. That the, the, the fire is moving, and I think he's asking us, are, are we willing to follow the cloud? And, and I want to say that, that we are. Because it's always been about him. 
It's always been about, about following him wherever he guides, wherever he goes, wherever he leads. And you know what? And sometimes it's scary when the cloud goes and we're falling. We don't know what the future might look like. But this is how I view this decision. Part of what we made this decision is I feel and we feel the cloud is moving and it's time to follow the cloud. But there's also some practical examples that I wanna share with you as to why we're making this decision. Number one is this building that we're in, which has been a blessing to us. It's starting to get some wear and tear and, and we've talked to people in construction and you know, they're looking at, if we were to fully renovate this space, it would cost us almost 250,000 to a million dollars just to renovate this current space we're in. And that's one of the reasons is that, you know, over the next few years, we're starting to have some issues that, have, that are coming up in our facility and we're gonna need to address them. And much of our church income, our church giving is invested into our building. And, and moving, depending on where we end up, because we're still in the process of praying and figuring out, God, what do you have for us? And we know he'll speak to us what it is. But it, when we move, this, this, this will save us as a church forty to $60,000. If, when we find a new facility, depending where it is. And what this will hopefully allow us as a church to do is to go back to the mission of reaching the lost. That as our pastor, I feel strongly, I would rather invest our, our, our tithe and our giving into our community than just a building. I would rather invest into people who need Jesus. And our goal since our church was founded was to purchase a building. That's always been the dream or the idea ever since the beginning. And somehow along the way, there's been moments where we had opportunity and it just always fell through. But our goal, our dream would be to be able to purchase and have a building that we can be for our forever home, you know? And our hope is that we can save and raise enough funds to purchase our own building. You know, that would be the, the God dream, right? It would allow us, it allows us to, to open our ideas and open our minds on what our church is capable of. Because I believe we're just, you know, we're 30 years in, I feel like we just scratched the surface. That there's so much more that God has for us as a church and Again, it's never been about a facility. Now, this facility has been a big part of our story. But I know that God will open the right doors for us. Now, we don't know fully what this is going to look like. Now, we've been praying about where God would have us to move. And we trust that he has the perfect location for the next home of known Victory Church. We truly believe it. Now we wanna ask you, Beth and I, as your pastors, as, as well as our board, to be praying for us. You know, I'm, I'm 30 years old and I was so excited to turn 30 because I'm like, Dad, that's when Jesus started, you know? That's how I felt. Now some people, they turn 30, they're like, this is it. Call it, right? Like midlife crisis, like, you know? But I'm excited. But one thing that means is I've never done this before. Our board has never really done this before. And so what we need is we need as a church for you to be praying for us and praying for us as we, as we figure out where God has us to go. Now we've been actively looking for a new location and, and our dream would be to be able to be in a community that we can invest in. The ability to not only serve the needs within our own church, but meet the needs in our community and in our city. And for a while, we haven't been able to do a lot of the things that I believe God wants us to do. And so our, our goal, our dream would be to go into a community that we can invest in. But again, we ask you to be praying for us. And also I wanna, I wanna encourage you, if you have questions, come ask. 
We, we don't want to keep anything hidden. We want to make sure it's from the beginning, honest, transparent. If you have questions, please come ask. Or if you feel God is speaking to you, maybe God is saying something to you about our church or about our pastors or about our board or about whatever, please, 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 please tell us. Because we want all of us as a church, you know, this is us making this decision to go into the unknown. But I can tell you as a board, we left our board meeting excited about where God is leading us as a church. We are excited. We know that it's gonna be even better than what was. But we trust that God has what's best for us. And once we have more information, we're gonna let you know as soon as we find out maybe where God is telling us or where God is speaking. We're gonna be, again, as quick as, as we can about it.